Hi everyone, Dwayne here from Townsend Lights and in this video I wanted to quickly show you how you can take a set of battery powered lights, whether it be something like these little bud lights, something like this which has a little LED inside that glows behind those little trees. Uh, don't worry about the fact that it's all faded, I'm just using this as an example. And even if you have a big bunch of what used to be solar lights, and the little solar panel went out on it and you thought what a big waste of lights there's something like 300 lights on this so um i'll show you how you can get all these to run off power and it all uses this little guy here so this is what they call a buck converter this takes an input whether it be um, i think there's 12 volts and using the little screw on the top here you can then adjust it down to match the input of what the lights require so how do you work out what the input of the lights? Well, really, really easy. You just look at the battery pack. So a AAA and a AA battery are 1.5 volts. This one had three. So basically you just uh, added them all together. So you got one, two, three volts, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so 4.5 volts in total. And in this one, it's one of those little disc ones. And these are three volts. And we're going to replace that and throw that away and I will get onto it and show you what it looks like. To start with, we basically are going to cut this off. Now, it is important to figure out which is the positive and which is the negative because they will only go one way. Now, you can't damage them. If you hook them up the wrong way, they're just not going to go. So, I'm going to cut that off. Now, you can work it out from within side here because where the, where the power comes in. See if we just pry this off. Here we go. When this wire comes in, one of the wires is going down into here, which is the negative, and the other one is going over to the switch, which is a positive. So it's coming in, going there, and then cycling all the way through and then coming back out. So we'll pull this bit of wire out. Now on this wire, there'll be some markings. And on here, it's very hard to see on camera. I don't know if you can see it. There's some little white dashes that indicates that that must be, and that is the positive, where there's nothing on that one, which is the negative. So we get back to this. So we're just snipping that away, like so. Get a trusty pair of snippers. Snip a little bit of that away, like so. Now you can solder those if you wish. Uh, for a nice tidy connection, but we're not going to on this. And then on here, once again, we're just looking for those markings, which are dang near impossible to see, but that one, that is the positive. That's got the, th the little lines on it. I think you can see it through there. Then we get a little guy here. Now on here, you'll see that there is in and out. So it's quite hard to see. But in here you've got V in and ground in, and you've got V out and ground out. So in is where our power is going to go, and out is where we are going to hook these up. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with the in, so we can regulate it with that little screw, uh, before we hook the lights up onto that side. So once again, we've got V in and ground. So what I'm using is a USB cable. In this case it was a mini USB, so I cut that off, and... We're going to wire that in to negative and positive. So this is the scene now is going to be plugged into a USB hub uh, that I have here. But uh, a cell phone charger does a job perfectly adequate. In fact, last year, uh, if I can find a photo, I'll put it up in the corner. I ran um, lights around the lounge just, just doing this process. There might have been about 500 lights on it and it um, worked perfectly fine. Uh, except for if the lights, if there's too many lights and too much of a drain on the on the power, it, it will drop. But um, you do need to inject power at the other end if you're going to do that. But we can touch that on that in another video. So hooking that on. So we've got so there's five volts coming in. To double check that that was uh, that that's live. Okay, so that is the input done. So we are going to connect the multimeter up to the uh, output. So we've got our positive. And negative and we have 1.2 volts coming out 
Now, as we determined earlier, we want 4.5 volts. So this is where we get the little screwdriver. There's a little screw uh, on top. Uh, screwing out will increase the voltage or make it higher and screw it in will decrease the voltage to make it lower. But as you can see, it's jumping up. So we want 4.5 or very close to it without going over because that means you're overdriving the LEDs and they could fail. I'm not sure what the tolerances are of these little guys. I have noticed sometimes these little buck converters do struggle to get it exact. In this case, 4.3 seems to be the max they can get it out to. So um, that is what we will run it at. Unplug those. Now we get our wire, uh, the little white markings, and that's going to go into the positive side. Now I've still got this connected up uh, just purely because I'm a risk taker. And we might see some smoke if you're lucky, but we won't. Right, so we screw that in. Normally, like I say, you would do this without any power source, but I want instant gratification when I plug this one in. And there we go. And look how bright they are. That's um, that's not overdriving them because. Because they had 4.5 volts in the battery pack, we're running 4.3, and absolutely beautiful. And that means you're not having to replace batteries every couple of days through the Christmas season when you want to run these on your mantelpiece or along the Christmas table. The other thing you could do with this, in fact, is run the same use like a USB out of here, but plug it into a USB battery pack. And that way you can hide the battery pack on the Christmas table while you're running the lights all through the table. So now what you could get flash and fancy, you could chip out all that in there, lay that flat or what have you. Uh, you could then run the positive back through the switch so you can switch the lights on and off instead of just having them constantly on like this. And that way you've got a nice little pack for it as well. That's just a little bit warm, but I can sit there with my fingers on it all day and I'm not going to get burnt. If this was 12 volts coming in, this would get extremely hot. So just be that in mind. I'll show you a little pack shortly on another set of lights that I did to make it a lot tidier and definitely a lot safer. Right, so that's that. Let's unhook these lights and show you how to get one of those to work. In fact, uh, my wife has a whole bunch of these on the table and every night she wanted them turned on and you had to remember to turn them off. And then a couple of days later, you're replacing batteries. This year, I am going to run like a main spine coming through and then all these are just going to be sneaking off wired in parallel so they all get the same voltage and they can all be controlled by one of these with a switch. Right, so what we're doing, hooking them back up, because as we determined earlier on, this is a three volt battery. So we need to take this down to three volts. Turning in, we should see that voltage start to drop soon. There we go, it's down there. It takes, takes a little while. You can get better ones of these, I might add. So we jumped from three to five volts then. Um, so sometimes they're a bit difficult to get them exact. So we're just going to leave it there for the purpose of the video. 2.7 volts, right? Unhook those. So what we do, we need a piece of wire and we need to get this apart. So I've already taken out the little screw and the battery and I could see that that little base was glued in. So I just got a screwdriver underneath it, like so, and pulled it out. And that's all we have. We have just one LED. Uh, once again on a switch so what we've got here we've got the negative uh, which is in the middle and then we've got the positive uh, back here on a switch so we are going to run a wire and just solder it directly onto those two bits there what we need to do first we need to tin the wires like so i'm going to cut them short like so Now, once again, I've got in this particular wire, I have black, now, which is going to use for negative and the other one for the positive. Now we're going to drop a little bit of solder on the center one and a little bit of solder on the one on the side. Like so. We bring our little guy in and do exactly what we did before, positive and negative. Now you'll know the light's not going when we plugged it in. That's because there's a switch on it. So with a bit of luck, when I flick the switch, we get a little light. And we straighten them up, poke them through there. I'm going to turn off the light. I don't know if you can see that, but then we have 
have a little LED and that's as easy as that. So what I would then do is probably just channel a little bit out there so that wire just came, came out the side that it's supposed to and so it sits flat. There's a whole bunch of those, a whole bunch of those wires coming through, all hooked onto a main line, no more batteries. All right. Uh, now, the last thing I wanted to quickly show you, I had a set of 300 Bud Lights, that they were solar lights, and one day they just stopped working. So I thought, well, this is no good. There's a, a lot of good lights on there. So I um, took them apart and hooked them up to exactly the same system. And now, if I plug that into, and they're all going. Now, granted, there's a lot of lights on here. So I'm gonna turn off some lights. So we're in the dark. And my daughter is going to run these in her bedroom along along the top, like how some people have uh, LED strips. She wanted these. Now they're getting blown up by the camera because it's just an iPhone. But as you can see, they do an effective job of um, powering these up, even though there's about 300 of them here. And on these ones, I put a switch on it. So it's exactly the same, same concept as those first set of lights we played with, except I put them in this plastic box so for her it was safe and she isn't prone to damaging the wires or, or anything like that and it's actually exactly the same setup except the switch is going into up so the positives coming out into the switch out of the switch and then back into the positive side and then both wires and pack out the side of the box box screws together and then we have it it's definitely worth looking at if you're into battery powered or solar powered uh, items and you're just sick and tired of the batteries needing to be replaced or solar panels dying and it's a great way to resurrect lights and ornaments and so forth all right i will end the video there catch you later